Hi there learners and welcome to our next module, module 1.2, where we are now looking specifically at software. Remember in the first one, we looked at the PC. Now we are going to look at software. We're going to look at hardware later on, etc. So let's look at some of the things that we're going to be touching on. In this one, we're specifically going to be looking at the difference really between application software and system software. Now, why am I saying that? Because when we look at the computer, we already said in the previous module that it's divided into two parts, namely your hardware, that which you can touch and see the, the, the physical parts of the computer, and the software. But the software, even though it is you know, a group of programs that perform specific tasks for the user, there are different types of software. And this is why we are delving into this today, because we are going to look at the difference between system software and application software. Now you can see application software is fairly, fairly simple because we're talking about an app. So that means it's a program. The minute you see software, we're talking about a program that performs a particular task. This software or this program, however, doesn't just do one task. This particular program manages the entire computer system. And this is broken into three categories, namely your operating system, your drivers, and your utilities. So don't forget that as we go through. Now, like I mentioned to you, our application software, we're talking about a group of, group of programs that perform specific tasks for us as the users. Um, we need only think of things like our word processing programs, like Microsoft Word, typing tutor software, gaming software. If you buy a particular game, let's say you go and download Forza Horizon 7, um, are you going to be playing Apex with that piece of software? No. It performs the specific task of allowing you to play Forza Horizon 7. If I download Microsoft Word, can I do present, uh, PowerPoint presentations in it? No, I can't. Okay? So please remember that application software or your apps, WhatsApp, for example, any of these, it's programs that perform specific tasks for the user. System software is different in that it is a program or programs that's intended to control, support, or operate the computer. And like I said, this is divided into your operating system, your utility software, and then your drivers as well. So let's take a deeper dive into our system software. Now remember, this provides an interface between the user and the computer. So the way we interact with the computer, the, the, the very fact that I'm able to do these presentations, I can click on little icons, I can uh, go to my desktop, all of those things. I'm interacting with the computer in a graphical way. This is why we talk about the graphical user interface. This means that software works with windows, menus, and icons, and hence most system software includes this graphical user interface. So questions around this could be what is system software and what is meant by a GUI? And a GUI, please, when you are asked what is meant by it and what the acronym stands for, those are two different things. This is the acronym. GUI stands for graphical user interface. What does it mean? It means that we are referring to software that allows me to interact with the computer in a graphical way. Simple as that. Now the software which controls all the activities that takes place inside the computer, this is known as your operating system. Please, this applies to um, whatever device you are using, whether you are using a um, Windows device, whether you're using a Apple an Apple device, um, cell phone, tablet, any of those things, they all come preloaded with operating systems. Okay, and these are the various types of operating systems. So when they mention that you are maybe going to be buying an Android phone, they're talking about the operating system. You might have a Samsung phone, but the Samsung phone has the Android software as its operating system. The Apple device, your iPhone, has the iOS software running as its operating system. Now, again, what does this operating system do? It manages all the hardware and all the other software on the computer. So the fact that you have 
apps on your phone, the fact that you have different um, programs and games on your PC, that is the operating system managing the physical components and the other programs as well. It maintains the security. So the fact that you can log into a PC, the fact that you can put in a username and password, all of those things to gain access to your cell phones, tablets, any other computing devices, that's the operating system doing that. And it provides you the user interface with your desktop, your icons, your folders, all of those things. That's the operating system and that's why it's so important. In fact, it is the most important software in your computer because all other hardware and software depends on it and is controlled by it. Okay, this is why whenever you go and buy a laptop, desktop, um, tablet, cell phone, it's already preloaded or pre-installed with an operating system. Okay, I always use the example to say you can have a phone without WhatsApp, but you can't have WhatsApp without a phone, right? Because we need that operating system. Now, here's a few examples of what the graphical user interface allows us to do. And for many of you, you, you are used to seeing this, but this is not how computers used to operate. It used to be black and white screens. There were no pictures. There were no dialogue boxes like this. There were no, um, you know, menus, text boxes, spinners, radio buttons, command buttons, all of these things. This was not the norm. And when this came into effect, um, this is why the, the, the uh, graphical user interface is so important because our operating system allows us. And guys, you know that this is much easier to work with than if you had to type out commands and instructions every single time. Okay, so that is our operating system. Now we have our utilities. Now here are two examples of your utilities. You've got a snipping tool, you've got a calculator. But what, what are these programs? What is a utility in terms of our system software? Well, utility programs are the housekeeping programs of the system software. I must add this. They are built-in programs into the operating system. So, for example, Windows. Windows has these utilities built into it. It's not something you need to install afterwards. Okay? So, that's the first thing. Utilities are programs that are built into the operating system. They are the housekeeping programs of the system software. They optimize the performance of your computer and ensure that it's running smoothly. For example... You have other utilities like the disk cleanup, which allows the user to select, you know, to remove all unwanted or unneeded files. You've got your scan disk, you've got the fact that you can uninstall, and you've got backups as well. Okay, so these are all examples of your utility software. Then they give us a few more examples of application software. This one is very important because when we talk about the Microsoft Office Suite, we're talking about a group of programs that are installed as one program, but they are individual programs inside of that one program. In other words, I buy this piece of software as a suite instead of buying each one of these individually. So I buy it as one collection, I install it as one, but my PC um, recognizes each one of those pieces of the suite as individual programs. There are other types of um, application software as well, like a communication software, desktop publishing, games, web authoring, web browsers, plugins, and other financial applications. Okay, so we've looked now at our system software, we've looked at the operating system, we've looked at the utility software, we've seen examples of our application software, and the last one in this is our driver software. So when we talk about drivers, we're not talking about the guys who are, <laughs> who are driving vehicles, no. We're talking about a piece of software that is able to identify new hardware devices when you plug them into your PC and interact with them seamlessly. In other words, you don't need a whole complicated process in order to use a printer. You can plug it in, you install the driver software, and the hardware can now work with your computer. In many cases, the operating system already has built-in drivers for many devices on the market. Okay, so it doesn't always have everything, but they do have a lot of the basic drivers. 
then a beautiful feature of Windows is something called plug and play. Again, this is something we take for granted today, but in many computers, especially going back 20, 30 years, this was not the norm. You would plug in a piece of hardware, whether it's a flash drive, whether it's a printer, you went through a whole complicated process in order to have it work. What do we do today? This plug and play feature allows us, for example, to take a flash drive and to plug it in to our PC and use it. So what does this feature do? It's a feature of the operating system that automatically detects a new device. Have you seen when you plug in a flash drive, those um, notification boxes pop up, right? So plug and play detects that. It then loads the relevant driver. What did we say a driver is? Software that identifies new hardware and allows us to work with it and then allocates computer resources, right? So that is what this feature does. You need to know this definition. It is very, very important. Okay. Once plug and play is done what it needs to do, the device is now ready to be used. We also have another term that comes up, the last two terms that we're dealing with. The first being hot swappable. Now, this simply means that we can use anything external. We can plug it into the PC without having to switch it off in the past. And this is why you need to understand. This is why I, I love history. Because we need to understand the past to appreciate where we are now. In the past, when you needed to add anything to your computer, you had to switch it off. Plug in the piece of hardware, switch it on, and then give instructions as to how to use it. Now, plug and play has already allowed us to be able to do this. However, being that items and hardware are now hot swappable, like your flash drive, it means that I can simply take it and plug it in. Right? In the past, again, you had to switch off, then plug it in, then switch it back on. Okay, so please remember those terms. Then I think the last one is our firewall. Now, a firewall is a program, which means it's software, and it works like a bouncer at the door of an exclusive club. Like that bouncer, only those people who are on the invited list will be allowed into the club. Um, you're not getting through unless your name is there. Okay? A firewall will only allow those websites designated to be safe to access your computer. So when you go to a particular site and it needs to access something from your PC or something from you, the firewall is there as the first line of defense. It is an added or it has an added feature in that it will also block many outgoing traffic or any outgoing traffic to unauthorized sites as well. So your firewall software can be customized to say, well, look, um, the person who's using the PC is not allowed to go to these sites and these sites are not allowed to communicate with the PC. And so it can act as um, a blocking mechanism there as well. But it's a lovely piece of software that just ensures that you can browse the internet safely. And folks, that's it for module 1.2, where we've now looked at the difference between application software and system software. We've looked at the operating system, its functions and examples. And we've also looked at the Windows environment as well.